Hey, and welcome back to another video. So just a quick video that I wanted to put together. What makes older early 2000s or late 90s mobile phones so strong? People say that they're built like tanks, they're built like rocks, they're just built different. And that's somewhat true, but it's not entirely correct to call them built like rocks or built like tanks. And in this video, I will explain exactly what I mean. So as usual, before jumping right in, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Also don't forget to leave a comment down below or a question down below and we can start a discussion or I can answer your questions. My social media is linked down in the description below which includes Instagram, Discord and Twitter. And now let's jump right into this video. So as you can see, I have an assortment of early 2000s mobile phones here, arranging from Motorola's to the good old Nokia's. We have a 3390 over there, aka the 3310. This is the US variant of the 3310. It's essentially the same phone, just a different bandwidth selection that it's got. We have Motorola's, uh, we have the Oddball Philips phone over here. We have Sony Ericsson's, we have a prototype Sony Ericsson. So we have a bunch of phones here so what makes older phones built like tanks or built like rocks as a lot of people want to call them because they're very resistant to damage whenever you drop them whenever you dash them uh they don't usually break as modern phones would now you'd say the general argument you'd say is that okay modern phones are built more of glass and all that stuff but modern phones whenever they're built of plastic as well they aren't equally tough to older phones they even though they're built from identical materials now why is that why can't modern phones take the same amount of damage as older devices like that so again bringing back the common meme theme here Nokia's, Motorola's, older ones from the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, well, probably the 80s as well, built like tanks. They're saying that they're built tough. They're just built like rocks. They're rock solid and rock hard. That's the common theme across the internet. However, that's not true. If anyone across these memes or whatever and stuff has actually held one of these things, you'd realize these things are anything but built like rocks. They creak, they bend, they, they're sort of, you know, flexible. They're not built like a rock that is not flexible, does not bend, and does not creak. As you can see, this thing is very bendy. The 3310 or 3390, this one is very bendy. So that's a Nokia example. Let us grab Motorola. So this is also an older Motorola device. This is the A810, a pretty rare device. But then again, it also, is very flexible and very bendy. Let us grab a Motorola. We have the Silver L7. Again, very creaky, very bendy, and presses in at random places. Now, how does this tie into absorbing impact or absorbing damage when dropped or dashed? When looking from an engineering standpoint, the best thing to compare phones to, as an example, are ships. Yes, ships, large oil tankers specifically, ore carriers, bulk carriers, those large, long ships. If you go on YouTube and look, oil carriers, bulk carriers uh, flexing in the high seas, if you just type that in, you'll see a lot of videos of large and long ships flexing and bending in the high seas. And this is not a design flow or anything like that. that they're built to do that. They're built to bend and flex when under load. And that is a design characteristic of those ships. If they were more rigid, they wouldn't be bending and flexing and stuff. And instead, they'll have brittle failure even sooner than what a, law, a more flexible ship would have. Now, I'm saying that there have been cases of, of course, ships failing uh, after the uh, flexibility point is passed. But still, a flexible ship will take more abuse taken more energy by flexing its structure 
than a rigid ship. The rigid one will stay in its form, but when it passes a certain failure limit, it'll break. The flexible ones will absorb energy for much longer and go back to their original shape. I'm not going to use engineering terms here. However, that's basically what happens there. So the same applies to phones. When the phone is flexible, bendy and malleable with really, I should say, I wouldn't say squishy, but bendy parts, as you can see, these will take better impact when dropped and stuff like that. It also helps that most of these are held together by press mechanisms. You can take these covers on pretty on and off pretty easy. Nokia had that express on cover thing where you can take covers on and off pretty easily. And whenever these things are dropped, those covers just come flying off. So the energy isn't concentrated into a fixed form, forcing it to break. Instead, it just comes apart. You can put it back together. That also helps. But the main factor here is that these things absorb energy because they're bendy and flexible and that applies to a lot of phones as you can see, just not Nokia's. This applies to a lot of different phones from the early 2000s or mid 2000s. Here's a phone from 2008, the Nokia 5800, or is it 2009, 2008 or 2009, I forgot to put up there. This thing also, as you can see, bends and flexes quite well. I owned one of these and I still have that one back home. I remember using that phone for about two and a half years and that thing took a lot of abuse, but it never broke. It got scratched, it got dinged, but it never split anywhere. It never cracked. The plastic never cracked or anything like that. It absorbed the energy whenever it fell down. That's exactly how these older phones survive a considerable amount of damage without a complete failure. It's because they're flexible, bendy, or whatever you want to call it. They absorb the energy instead of resisting the energy as more modern rigid phones. So if you take a modern phone, for example, here's a Nokia 9 PureView. It's a rigid phone. It's stiff. It's very stiff. It doesn't have a bendy feeling to it. It's a stiff piece of metal, plastic, and glass. So when this drops, there's a higher chance of it breaking because it doesn't absorb energy that much. Of course, everything is made from pure glass now. Unlike before, even touchscreen phones, they had plastic resistive displays. That also counts. But as a whole, it's modern phones rigidness that actually uh, make them more fragile. Now you can cover them in metal as much as you want. For example, uh, the red hydrogen one, this thing is built like a tank, it's made out of metal all over. This thing can survive quite a good impact on the glass. Like I said, modern phones have Gorilla Glass and all that stuff that helps. But as a whole, you probably understand what I'm trying to say here. It's all about impact absorbing versus resisting impact. Modern phones resist impact, and that's why most of them will break uh, much easily. Another thing in older phones that I've noticed, especially with the displays, is that if you look at these displays, there's a huge gap between the actual display and the plastic. So if you break this, the chances of breaking the display actually on the inside is quite low. And it's not even that phone, even these old resistive touchscreen phones, as you can see, there's quite a lot of space between the actual LCD and the glass, or the, the plastic. These were not glass, some of them were glass, but uh, like for example, no, that's plastic too. Cannot find one here that's glass, so they're all plastic. However, a lot of these have a big gap between their actual LCD and the screen, does it, it doesn't really matter if it's touchscreen or not. There's some space, so the, the screen may get damaged, but the LCD on the inside is safe most of the time. So you just have to replace, this, uh, replace the upper cover or the plastic cover and you'll be fine to go. Another good ex example is the 3310. As you can see, there's a big gap there. And to begin with, this plastic doesn't really break that easily either. It's built really well. It absorbs energy really well, but when it does break, it saves the LCD underneath. So that's another example as to why these older phones are better at surviving impact. And the final example that I have is a really, really important one. Whenever a crack or a ding or whatever appears on an older device like these, 95% of the time, the plastic surface or the metal surface in some phones that does get damaged is not a functional part of the phone. Modern phones, the majority of these phones 
is their main functional surface, their display or their back, which probably houses the, uh, the wireless charger, the cameras, whatever. Uh, most of these things are just jutting out. And if you crack this glass, the replacing it is extremely expensive and unpleasant, and it's probably not gonna work the same. But if you crack this glass, it's just a part of the housing. You just replace the housing and you're good because the camera inside is not affected. And that's another thing. If you crack this phone badly, the thing is still gonna function because nothing that is required for it to function is built into the housing itself. But modern phones are so integrated into their own housings that whenever damage is occurred to the housing, the phone itself is affected in some way or another. So that is the final point that I wanted to make. So as a whole, I hope you enjoyed this video and now you understand as to why older phones are better at surviving impact than more modern phones. Of course, there were fragile older phones back in the day. Not all of them were built like this with this flexible body and stuff like that. However, it's just good to know that the built, with, built like tanks or built like rocks statements aren't exactly true because these aren't really rocks. They're more flexible, bendy or whatever you want to call it. So as usual, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. And if you honestly did like this video, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also, if you really like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I can answer your questions or we can start a discussion. If you have any comments uh, regarding this video, leave them down below. Like we can start a discussion. My social media is linked down in the description below, which includes Instagram, Discord and Twitter thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.